This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. The Bible warns us that they that live godly shall suffer persecution. So peace is not the absence of trouble. It is possible to be in the midst of the biggest crisis in your life and still experience peace. Wow, why? Because we have Jesus in the midst of the biggest crisis in our life. Men, it's our time to rise to another level at the 2020 Mentality Conference. Join us online September 11th and 12th for two power-packed days with three dynamic speakers. When you find the, the will of God for your life, it's the greatest, most peaceful adventure. You don't want to miss out on this revival of manhood. Mark your calendars and register now at CreflodollarMinistries.org. If you have your Bibles, go with me to the book of St. John, chapter 14, and verse 27. We'll read it in the King James and the New Living Translation. And tonight we're going to talk about peace, uh, but not just, you know, you know, the fact that you need some peace, but we're going to talk about, I call this tonight, Jesus' peace is successful peace. Jesus, Jesus' peace is successful peace. Peace. So you can say Jesus' peace equals successful peace. And we're really going to go over this because this should be uh, high, highly demanded in the lives of, uh, of, of Christian people right now. There's a lot of confusion going on, a lot of stress out in the world because of the pandemic, a lot of wondering if you're being lied to or if you're being told the truth. Uh, Oh, the spirit of division like never before. Uh, and, and, and in the middle of all of that chaos, you know, the Bible says where there is envy and strife, there is confusion in every evil work. In the middle of all of that, I tell you what, there is a high demand or should be a high demand for successful peace. And the only way your peace is going to be successful is that it is Jesus' peace. So let's begin to, to, to just lay this out for you. Let's start in verse 27. The King James Bible says, and this is Jesus speaking here. He says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Now look what he says, peace I leave with you. Jesus says, it's my peace. Now we got to figure that out. Peace I leave with you. He said, it's my peace I give unto you. Peace I live with, leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth. So we're not talking about worldly peace. We're talking about peace that comes by being in Jesus. We're talking about the peace that comes by being in relationship with Jesus. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So he says, I give you peace so you won't let your heart be troubled. I give you peace so you won't be afraid. I give you Jesus' peace because it's successful peace and your heart will not be troubled. Now look at this in the New Living Translation, John chapter 14 and uh, verse 27. The New Living Translation says, I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. Notice, I'm leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift. The peace I give is a gift. The world cannot give. It's a gift the world cannot give. So first of all, when, when, when Jesus says, I'm giving you peace as a gift, that now means we have to appropriate or take possession of the gift. 
we have to take possession of the gift. How? By faith. So by faith, I take possession of the gift of peace that the world cannot give. The world cannot give this gift. So there's a clear distinction between the, the gift of peace that comes from Jesus and what the world calls peace. He says, so since you have this gift of peace that came by Jesus, don't be troubled. Don't be afraid. So th th here's my way out of trouble. Here's my way out of being afraid. Receive the gift of peace. If, if, if today, if tonight you, you have uh, felt afraid, if today you have felt uh, troubled, he says, here's your way out. Receive by faith the gift of peace. Come on, say this out loud with me. I receive by faith the gift of peace. Amen. So that's where it starts, with your faith, all right? Now, let's look at... Um, St. John 16, 33. I want to share these three scriptures with you first. So Jesus leaves us a gift of peace, but if we don't take possession of that gift by faith, then it's like anything else. If you got money in the bank and you don't put, take possession of that money that's in the bank, then you'll live like a pauper. You, it'll, it'll just not do you any good. Now look what he says in John 16, 33. John 16, 33, you're familiar with it. He says, these things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. Oh, wow. So he says, you find peace in him. In Jesus you might have peace. So he says, in the world you shall have trouble. In this world you'll have tribulation. Can I get a witness? In this world you're going to have tribulation. They that live godly shall suffer persecution. Listen, you're not going to be able to live in this, in this world and not face down tribulation and persecution. In the world, you will have tribulation, trouble, persecution. He says, but be of good cheer. Why? I have overcome the world. He says, you find this in him. You find in him peace. You find in him peace. You find in him peace. This kind, of fee, this kind of peace you'll not find anywhere else but in Jesus Christ. Nowhere else but in him. And then look at St. John 20, St. John chapter 20, and I want to look at this, these verses. I want to look at verse 19, verse 21, and verse 26. St. John 20, 19, 21, and 26. All right, now watch this. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus, and he stood in the midst of them. So this is, you know, after Jesus had been crucified, dead and buried, and then they said that the door was shut, and Jesus came, the door being shut, and he said unto them, peace unto you. Get a hold of this picture. The door is shut. They're thinking that Jesus is dead for good. Jesus is raised from the dead. He walks through the door, the door being shut, and here's what he said. Once he showed up in the room, he said, peace be unto you. So you have to equate peace with Jesus. When Jesus showed up, peace showed up. When Jesus showed up, peace showed up. Is Jesus showing up in your life? Are you allowing him to show up in your situations? Are you allowing him to show up in your circumstances? Are you allowing Jesus to show up in your everyday living? Because when Jesus shows up, peace shows up. As you begin to have relationship with him, as you begin to have relationship with the word, as you begin to have relationship in your prayer time, when Jesus shows up, peace shows up. Now look at the next verse, verse 21. He says, then said Jesus to them again, peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, even so send I you. Look at what Jesus said. He said, peace be unto you. Uh, he's trying to get them to get it. I I'm peace. I I'm the gift. Peace be unto you. And then look at verse 26. He says, and after eight days again his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, stood in the midst, and said, peace be unto you. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to share these scriptures with you because this gift of peace 
is unto us. We have Jesus, we have peace. We have Jesus, we have peace. You can't find peace in your material possessions. You can't find peace in, the, in, 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 the, in your friends. You can't find peace in, in, in the stock market. The only place you're going to be able to find peace is in Jesus. So what is peace? Well, let's talk about what it's not. Peace is not an absence of trouble in your life. Yeah. And see, the world thinks, well, I have peace because I don't have trouble in my life. And the Bible warns us, he says, uh, in this world you'll have tribulation. The Bible warns us that they that live godly shall suffer persecution. So peace is not the absence of trouble. It is possible to be in the midst of the biggest crisis in your life and still experience peace. Wow. Why? Because we have Jesus in the midst of the biggest crisis in our life. Look at Philippians 4 and 7, and then Colossians 3.15. Philippians 4 and 7, uh, and then Colossians 3.15. So, so peace, remember, is not the absence of trouble. It's the presence of Jesus in your life, and, and, and that's so important. Look at verse 7. He says, and the peace of God which passeth all understanding. Notice what the peace of God does. It'll keep your hearts and it'll keep your mind, but how? Through Christ Jesus. So it's, three, it's through P Christ Jesus that you will find the peace that will keep your heart and keep your mind. It's that relationship with Jesus, that relationship with His Word, that relationship in prayer that will keep your heart and your mind. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh. So God and His Word and the Word became flesh, Jesus, Listen, they're the same. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, that's where you find your peace. When you come home and, 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 and you hear bad news and, and you get in the Word and you, and you talk to Jesus and, and, and you rely on Him and you think of His love, and uh, that's where you find your peace. And He says that will keep your mind, that will keep your heart. It's the peace that comes from God that passes all understanding. Look at Colossians chapter 3 and verse 15. Colossians chapter 3 in verse 15, he says, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Let the peace of God rule in your heart. Another translation says, let the peace of God rule in your heart like an umpire. An umpire calls it safe. The umpire calls it out. Let the peace of God rule in your heart as an umpire. He says, let the peace of God rule in your hearts to the which also you are called in one body and be ye thankful. You know, we've got to learn how to live our lives uh, and allow the peace of God to begin to guide our lives. Where there is no peace, then you probably don't have the confirmation to do the thing. You know, God's not on that thing where there is no peace. But where there is peace, you may want to consider, well, maybe God's on this thing right here. Uh, peace can be like a God. It can be like an umpire. You meet somebody and you consider marrying them, and you've never had peace about it, the umpire is saying, not safe. <laughs> uh, you meet somebody, and there's been the peace of God over your life, over it, and it's just been a peaceful thing, a peaceful relationship, where the umpire of peace is saying, safe. We would do ourselves a favor if we'll begin to pay attention to the umpire of peace. Let peace rule in your heart. That's the question tonight. Is peace ruling in your heart? Is peace ruling in your heart? You got to pay attention to when you get involved in business, you get involved in relationships, you get involved in a plan or something, and just, you, just don't, you just don't have any peace. I just don't have no peace about it. I don't know why. Well, you not having peace is enough. You don't have to know why. That'll be revealed to you later on. Let peace rule. And if peace is not ruling, you might want to cancel that wedding. You might want to cancel that transaction. You might want to cancel that investment. You want peace to begin to rule in your heart as an umpire. So that's the true kind of peace that you can experience with Jesus, peace that surpasses your understanding. That the peace that comes in your experience with Jesus and you don't even understand why you're at peace. You know, the doctor just said you have cancer, but you have peace because of your experience with Jesus and you know your healing's available. 
you have peace. That's the kind of peace we're talking about. So, naturally speaking, it does not make sense for you to feel completely at rest and at peace when you are in a dire straits. But supernaturally, you can be filled with peace. That's good to know. Supernaturally, you can be filled with peace. So, the world defines peace as harmony. They define peace as tranquility based on what is happening in the sensory realm. And uh, that, the world defines peace based on your comfort. Uh, but we can have peace because we're in Jesus even when we're not uh, comfortable. We can have peace in Christ Jesus even when, you know, we don't have the harmony or the tranquility. So that's the world's way of defining it. In the world, you have to have comfort. Uh, in the world, you've got to have tranquility based on what is happening in the sensory realm. So if it's not happening right in this sense natural realm, then you don't have any peace. And that's, 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 a, that's a powerful thing. That's really what it means to be holy. When they're walking around with no peace, we have peace. When they can only have peace when things are comfortable, we can have peace even in the midst of things that are not comfortable. Why? It's our experience with Jesus that allows that to happen. And so, Jesus can touch what you are feeling inside, and then he can turn that turmoil into his peace. He can touch what you're feeling on the inside. Emotions are about to just kind of really, you know, react in a negative way. But Jesus can touch those feelings on the inside, and he can turn that turmoil that's on the inside of you into peace. That's powerful. I, 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 I don't know if you understand what I'm talking about, but when you're just freaking out on the inside and you, 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 you immediately go to Jesus, you invite him into the situation, you invite his word in that situation, he turns the turmoil, he turns the confusion, and he turns it into peace. And, and I've been in those situations. I mean, the death of the beloved one, when you've you, you would think you would be all over the place, but it, he touches those feelings on the inside and he turns it into peace. Not knowing how to deal with this particular lack, not knowing how to pay this particular bill, and Jesus touches those feelings on the inside and he turns it into peace. And so with Jesus, transformation is always from inside out and not from outside in. The world, their peace, you know, starts on the outside and then comes in. Those of us who see our peace in Jesus, that transformation takes place from the inside out. Look at Psalms 29 and 11, because the Lord will give strength to his people. Praise God. God will give strength to his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace, with wholeness, with shalom. I believe that. He said, look at this scripture. This is something good to hold on to. The Lord will give strength to, unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with what? With peace. The Lord will bless, that word bless means empowered to have success. God will empower us with peace so we can have success. And there it is again. Now, now use your faith to take possession of that. God will empower me to have success. Say that out loud. God empowers me to have success. Amen. Praise God. So Jesus gives us peace. Jesus gives us security. Jesus gives us covering. Jesus gives us protection. Even in the midst of the storm, listen to these synonyms of peace. Security. Peace is security in the midst of turmoil. Peace is security in the middle of the trouble. Peace is a covering. You know, it's a covering from all of the things that might be, be happening. And I like to say it like this, he's got you covered. He's got you covered, praise God. He's got you covered. Peace is that protection, even in the midst of all those things that, that can happen. I'm reminded of Psalms 91. Turn there real quick. Psalms 91 and verse 1, go to 1 and 4. We're covered, praise God. He's got us covered. And, and by knowing this, by understanding that you're covered, and listen, I hope you hear, hear me when I say things have been made available 
but you got to take it. You got to take it. You got to take possession of it. That's your faith. That's your faith that says, I believe that. That's your faith that says, I'm going to meditate on that and until that, I'm going to ponder that until that's just, just, just moving all on the inside of me. I will take possession of that. Verse 1 says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide or live under the shadow, that shadow of Almighty God. That's your covering. Verse 4, he says, He shall cover thee with his feathers. So we're covered with the shadow of the Almighty God. He shall cover you with, with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. See, God's got you covered. God's got you under his protection. God's got you under his security. And, you know, people will not be able to understand why in the midst of a hard time you look like you're at peace. Why are you not freaking out? Why are you not tripping out? Because, first of all, you know, you know that you have the peace of, of God because you have Jesus. You have Jesus' peace, which means you have successful peace. And just by knowing that brings a calmness. Just by knowing that brings an ease, praise God. God's got you covered. Now, it does not matter what circumstances may be raging around you. You can cry to the Lord for his unmerited favor, just like David did. You can cry to the Lord. Uh, that would be so awesome. Every time some, some weird thing came up in your life, weird circumstance, unexpected thing, just imagine this, that immediately you go to God. Immediately you go to God and you cry unto the Lord. Look at uh, Psalms 57 and 1. I tell you, something really happens when God becomes your first move. Uh, it, it's kind of like playing chess. He becomes your first move. He becomes your first choice. You know, you don't need A, B, C, D, Ch which one you're going to choose. It, it's always him. You always go to him. And in Psalms 57, 1, he says, Be merciful unto me, O God. Be merciful unto me. Listen to David cry this. Be merciful unto me, O God. Be merciful unto me, for my soul trusteth in thee. Yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. You know what God is, you know what God is saying here? He's saying in the midst of calamities, find that Jesus peace. Find that covering. Find that protection. Find that security in the midst of turmoil until all this stuff pass. And if, even in the midst of this pandemic, I've had to find, I've had to cry out before God, Lord, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me, God. And, 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 and I have to see myself in his peace that all is well, all is going to be fine. And I have to open my mouth up and make my confessions every day because I, I, what am I doing? I am, I am laboring to stay at peace. I am laboring to stay in peace, praise God. I'm covered by his security. Be merciful, praise God. Now, even when destruction is around us, we can take refuge in the Lord. See, that's the thing. God is my refuge and my fortress. So where do you go when, you're, when, you're, when you're, your peace is under attack? Where do you go when, when your life is under attack? Where, where do you go when... The fear of the pandemic knocks on the door. You, I go to him. I go to Jesus, man. I go to him. I, I, he's, he's where I end up. I, I have to go to him. I'm not going to allow this fear to take over my life. So when destruction is around us, we can take refuge. It's kind of like when it's raining, you can take refuge under a porch. My dog, when it rains, he finds refuge, protection, security. Peace, peace. Now, you got to decide. This is, this is a decision on you. You're going to either start your day with Jesus or you're going to start your day with the news. And, man, it, it's, it's a lot better if you start your day with Jesus. If you start your day with all the bad news of the, of the world, instead of starting your day with Jesus, you're going you're to feel the impact of that throughout the day. Start your day with Jesus, practicing his presence, acknowledging him, committing your plans to him, and trusting him for his unmerited favor, trusting him for his wisdom and strength for the day. True contentment can only be found in Jesus Christ. 
in his brand new two message series, What is True Contentment? Creflo Dollar shares what makes contentment that is pleasing to God. Get your copy right now for your gift of just 15 US dollars or more. After you get the big house you always dreamed up, then what? After you get all the fame that you dreamed up, then what? After everybody knows your name, then what? I do not find my contentment in what people think about me or what they say about me. My, con my contentment is in Christ, and that's what this Bible says. That's powerful. To know you can live in a discontent world and still be satisfied. Add the radical abiding in the word mini book to make a combo today and get all of these transformative resources for your gift of 25 US dollars or more. Empower yourself to empower others at the 2020 Ministers and Leaders Conference making adjustments for the new age. You have to be that servant. Your house needs leadership, your children need leadership, but I'm learning that my leadership has increased because I understand that real leadership is serving. Join Creflo and Taffy Dollar as they discuss leadership and women in ministry, along with speakers Kenneth Fuller and Damon Davis, as they cover life in ministry and the benefits of technology in ministry, providing the tools for your position of leadership. When we learn that we serve, that we serve people as leaders, then we come to get better insight and better instruction on how to even be more effective in doing that. Christians want to give back to God, build their career in a more positive, healthy, Christian, wholesome environment, but through opportunities like this, we can help to change people's lives. Register now for the 2020 Ministers and Leaders Conference, October 6th through the 8th, online only. By the grace of God, we feed and clothe people, provide houses, visit hospitals and prisons, and do so, so much more. Every time you make a financial donation to support us, you do these things as well. The tangible relief we provide to God's precious people is only possible because of your faithful support. Thank you for supporting us as we strive to reach a lost and dying world for the Lord Jesus Christ. If God has placed it on your heart to support the vision of this ministry to reach the world with the gospel of grace, you may call in to make your financial donations or log on to CreflodollarMinistries.org. God bless you. There is a purpose for your life. Introducing Grace Life Academy, an innovative approach to learning God's word. Grace Life Academy offers unlimited access with hundreds of hours of online teachings. You'll have access to comprehensive video Bible lessons that include features such as e-courses, study guides, an online community, quizzes, and more. Text GLA to 51555 or go online to MyGraceLifeAcademy.com. Through Creflo Dollar Global Missions, we are providing food, clothing, crucial supplies, and the Word of God to people in the most remote regions of the world. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe.